<laughs> well, no, you, you look fancy. I mean, it's just, you know, compared to these two. I mean, we're not wearing, yeah. Yeah, mine's called by a by bare definition. I'm going to be selling insurance later this evening. <laughs> That's my excuse. I got a car for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have just the policy for you, Juan. <laughs> Okay, that's clearly the new show. We need Juan versus Caleb, like a <laughs> like a <laughs> trading barbs. Trading barbs, yeah. Working at a used car lot. We write so many shows here at Digital Trends. I think that's the new show. Somebody write this the two down. Two of you, <laughs> your your friends, but your enemies because you're trying to outsell each other. Frenemies. Frenemies. Mm -hmm. There it is. That's the that's the title of the show. Hello, everyone. This is Trends with Benefits. This is our weekly roundtable tech podcast here at Digital Trends, where we talk about the trending tech topics of the day. And we are broadcasting live on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and Twitch. Yes, Twitch as well. That means we can take your comments, your questions, whatever you want to bring up, whatever you want to talk about. Who do you think could sell cars better? Um, we've got <laughs> <laughs> topics today. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be discussing uh, robot waiters in Japan. They're now a reality. You can get a robot waiter. Uh, we've got Waymo launching the first ever autonomous car service. We talked about that earlier in the week on Digital Trends Live, but I wanted to bring it up again uh, because it's really, uh, this is the first one. You can order, if you're in Phoenix, an autonomous car to pick you up. So I want to discuss that. We're going to have the Apple Watch has an update, an update to the Apple Watch that we'll be talking about. And we have uh, streaming services, and we've got the best TV of 2018. That's a lot of stuff to get to, I'm just realizing. I just said that took me that long just to even say what we're going to talk about. So and The show's over. That's Great. it. Thanks for tuning Thanks in. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye, car. All right. Let's get our, introduce our cast of characters here. Bye, car. I don't know why I'm watching onto that. I'm Greg Nibbler. Uh, let's go to my right. I'm Juan Garcia, editor-in-chief of View the Prince and Espanol. We have an Espanol page. We do indeed. And Espanol page and oh, oh where's my mic the microphone. Back there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we read you know, we're live, so sometimes these things happen. So we're just gonna fix a microphone issue really quick. But yes, Juan is joining us. We're gonna hear from Juan DT Espanol. That was it. Yeah, it couldn't handle the accent. That's where it was. It's like, oh no, this, does, this there's no way. This is way too classic. It's also possible I sabotaged it. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> like slicing cords underneath there. You can't upstage me, Juan <laughs> Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> They're frenemies. Uh, all right, and down on the end. Uh, Adrian Warner with producer for Digital Trends, aka Hot Nozzle. Hot Nozzle. And, uh, and <laughs> I know I've got to echo it now from now on. And. Back here on the other end, it is the whiskey mist. The whiskey mist, aka Caleb Denson. I'm worried people might forget my actual name. Yeah, I know whiskey mist is becoming a very popular term on here. Yeah. There's a lot identities. of people that are just referring to you as that. We got to try and show the logo for that a little bit yes. later if we can dig that up, I get that out to there. I forgot to over, but we will get that logo. Maybe talk T-shirts. You bet. Yes. Yeah, okay. Logo. Yeah. I'll maybe uh, I'll have <laughs> have you send it. Over. Yeah. Do you have a? You got a logo, Juan? Does Juan even have a? My logo. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, my logo. <laughs> The wow. face of Juan Garcia. All right. Well, we're doing back-to-back -back segments with the two of you. Well, maybe a segment in between. We'll have to, you know, cool it down in here for a second. But we've got uh, left uh, today at Digital Trends. We have some new articles that just came up, some best ofs. It's that time of year. And right now, we have the best of 2018 television. The best television, as determined by Digital Trends, in particular, Caleb, of 2018, which is a pretty fierce competition. Yeah, really big competition this year. And of course, everybody's got an opinion on what should make the best TV. Right. So let's be clear, this is my choice for the best TV. When I weigh all the different factors in terms of picture quality and ease of use and relative affordability for such a premium TV, I picked the LG C8 OLED. And, um, and you know, I didn't come by that decision easily. Um, I looked at a lot of TVs this year, and I took a lot of those factors in consideration with all of them. There's, it was a tight race. The Samsung Q9FN, also an amazing television. I'd be very proud and, and happy to own that in my own home. Um, there was also the budget TV of the year, the TCL uh, R series, the R6 series. Excellent TV, too, but oh, uh, when you, monkey. I know, isn't that cute little animal? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the contrast on his fur. <laughs> Uh, that is the LG. That this is, is the, the LG that we're looking at right that's now. That's the LG C8, and uh, when when it comes down to it, it's just the 
the best picture quality you can get at the price, bar none. And it's also a, a treat to use. You know, like it's an intuitive TV. You don't get confused about how you load up Netflix or search for content. Mm -hmm. You can control it with Google Assistant or Amazon Echo speakers, the A word. You know, um, <laughs> it's it's just a. I mean, it's just a solid TV. It's also got a really nice design. I like the scoop stand on it this year. The scoop stand is nice. It's it is look at that profile. It's thinner than your iPhone. It is an absolutely stunning TV to behold. And so, yeah, I mean, when we talk about the best, I think it's okay to call out a premium product for being the best. You know, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd hold back on suggesting that, you know, a $250,000 car was the best, you know, I mean, it's right. amazing and great, but you know, we're talking about something that is attainable for people. Maybe you save up a little bit. So, um, so right now, uh, the 55 inch version is uh, down at around 1600 bucks. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. it's, and I it's, mean, if you're going on a yeah for a very high end television, when you, you know, that's not we, comparably. Yeah, I mean, just last skip year, rent for a month. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> or do what I do and eat cup noodles all day, all the time. Yeah, I'm just um, like in the back room here at Digital Trends. But you know, a lot of people ask me, "Do you have this TV, Caleb?" No, I don't have this TV. Like, I constantly have TVs going through mm -hmm. my living room. I don't really need to buy a TV. I mean, that's just part of the nature of my job. Is I, brag. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> no, saying. I'm, I'm I'm lucky. I know. I'm my job feeds me for TVs. I have to. Buy buy other things like dishwashers and mm. washing right. machines, you know. But um, but if I was to buy a TV this year, probably even next year, and that's the thing, the, th the price is going to go down a little bit on this between mm -hmm. February, March, April, before the new stuff comes out. So I would definitely be I buying this TV. Down by Super Bowl week. No, yeah, they, they, Super Bowl there's week. usually some sales usually around then. The best time to buy a TV. Yeah, but after CES, when we know about all the new stuff that's coming out, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. they actually start coming, and, and when they actually start coming out, that's when they're kind of trying to clear out the 2018 stock for the 2019 stuff. And it'll go down even further. So that's the it's the LG C8. LG C8 series OLED. You can get it in a 55, a 65, or if you really want to throw down some dough, a 77 inch model. Woo. Good lord. $5,000? Yeah, 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 five or six I, if I memory serves. Yeah, I don't look at that one as much because I just come on, 77 inches. That's that's uh, that's pretty big for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't even know if I have but a room not that would work. Not in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what? what's your go to? You can't fit it in the what's rope. your go to programming to test out television? I use a wide variety of stuff. So um, Netflix has some great stuff that's available in 4K and mm -hmm. HDR. YouTube has some absolutely beautiful footage in uh, 4K HDR, 60 FPS. Mm -hmm. I've been using a lot of that lately because cool. it's a streaming content and that's realistic for what a lot of people use. And then of course the very best thing you can put on a TV right now is a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Not as popular by far as right. Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime. But I try to use a little bit of all of those. I know what to expect from all of them. Mm -hmm. I've seen the same YouTube cl clips a million times, seen the same Netflix stuff a bunch. Um, so I have go-to sections of different movies and TV shows that I that I go to. Batman versus Superman has some Ooh. very telltale stuff. Yes, here's the thing about being a TV <laughs> reviewer. Sometimes you have to watch little bits of really terrible movies. You know what else looks amazing and is really great for TV testing but totally t terrible for watching an actual movie, Transformers. Oh, bummer. Transformers? <laughs> yeah, some of the recent Transformers are beautiful in terms of the, the imagery that's happening there, but, I mean, whoa, that's some tough movie watching right there. Yeah. They've been getting worse and worse, yeah. I mean, they've... I actually haven't watched one since the first like one. I think I watched the first one. You like them? The they're Transformers so, movies? They're so trashy. Like, uh, Adrian brought up a good point talking about streaming, you know, and just that in general because we wanted to bring, wanted to discuss that stuff as well. And with how much streaming content there is out there right now. And there's that's, so much good TV so to watch much. right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always forget about YouTube, honestly. I forget that there's stuff on YouTube. And I know they have their original content that's now going to be free but ad-supported starting next year, like that whole, the pay service didn't last very long, I think about six months, and they got rid of that. Um, and just for everybody who's listening live too, we got some mic issues that we're gonna fix here, so the people are trying to silence Juan, we won't let that happen on this show. <laughs> it's me, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> but with that, and, and this is a constant discussion when it comes down to this, you know, for years we all wanted to cut cable and get onto streaming services. Now there are so many streaming services, and somebody brought this up on Digital Trends Live this morning, is would anybody like to see a bundle of streaming services? And right now I don't know if there is really such a thing where you can bundle like Hulu, HBO Go, and Netflix, say, or, or something like that. Do you think 
we're going to get to that point or is it just there's going to be so many that we're just going to be keep on paying and paying and paying mm -hmm. to where it's like cable mm -hmm. the thing is when you watch something like on a streaming service you're usually watching and what i mean you don't have to go between one and two streaming say what would you want like a bundle, you know. Yeah, I think maybe just to save, save money. On price, yeah, maybe. But get they're a not discount. expensive, anyways. It, who would well, be offering those bundles? Up. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. and that's the other. That's thing. the thing I, is like, who would want to be like, you know what? I'm going to stick a couple other competitors into my package, yeah. as opposed to trying it to drive up to a t like a higher tier package of their own. Maybe it would be less like the Netflixes of the world who don't have to worry about that, but more like the DC streaming service. I mean, we got Disney Plus coming out. They, mm -hmm. I guess don't have to mm -hmm. um but it, like the dc universe streaming service cbs all access mm. some oh, of those smaller ones where maybe there's like one or two shows you want to watch but yeah. you don't want to pay and they're all owned by the same person yeah yeah, yeah. something mm -hmm. like that so you can get a sling with dvr and <laughs> that's it well yeah but that's not going to have some of the standalone shows that are just on cbs all access something like star trek discovery it's only on CBS. It's only on oh, CBS okay. All Access. Okay. Yeah, that's I the only place that. you can get it. This I don't is know. a passion maybe, point. Maybe for I'm the only one who <laughs> wants to do this or thinks that's a good idea. So I'm 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 having a complete brain fart here uh, right now. But there is uh there is a deal out there where you can tack on Showtime or HBO on top of something else and you, you get do it a little on Amazon bit of Prime. It. There you go. That's thank yeah. you. That's mm -hmm. it. Amazon Prime allows you to mm -hmm. tack on those uh, mm -hmm. and get a little bit of a break. And that's really the only bundle situation that we see out there right now. Um part of this is going to lead back to the conversation that we've had before about how streaming TV, when you when you add up all the different ones that you want to have mm -hmm. so that you can watch everything you want to watch, it's really not that much cheaper than cable anymore. You yeah. know? And that's, that's kind of where so I'm getting at. Really, yeah. I mean, the streaming thing is about a convenience. It's about access wherever you are. Um, and and for my money, I, right now, you can get Netflix and like be completely entertained all the time. But mm -hmm. Netflix is going to start losing stuff. They're losing the Marvel stuff to Disney, which is going to mm -hmm. open its own streaming services. They're losing uh, some of the Warner properties. Like we uh, just That's published right. a really gonna just they're they're going to have their own deal. And and Animaniacs like, is going to be gone. <laughs> gone. No. Yeah, Friends. Yeah. Friends, actually. Uh, Do you know how much, about like Friends. Do you know how much Netflix was paying for Friends? We just published an article about this. $100 million ah. for the rights to stream Friends. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I don't know that how many people are making their streaming decisions based on Friends, but I mean, the fact of the matter is that no. Netflix is losing its grip on this. Mm -hmm. You know, then you've got stuff like Hulu has uh, The Handmaid's Tale. It's a great mm -hmm. show. You're only mm -hmm. going to watch it on Hulu. Right. Um, I'm less enthusiastic about the CBS All Access stuff, but that's yeah. a good example. <laughs> right. No, no, and I agree. I'm like the upcoming Twilight Zone, that's kind of what I want. And Amazon watch. Prime has some, be on some, uh, some pretty Access. convincing uh, content, too, you know, that mm -hmm. are all originals. So um, it's starting to shape up more than like your streaming st uh, services are like your channels, you know, and um, and yeah, it's I, I subscribe to to Netflix, Hulu, um, Amazon Prime for other reasons than just the video right, service, right. obviously. It, yeah. um, and I and then Sling, and honestly, I'll be I, I don't pay for Sling. I have a reviewers account, so I can keep tabs on what they're doing. But if it weren't for Sling, you know, I wouldn't be seeing a lot of the the other stuff that's like on AMC. If you want to watch uh, Better Call Saul, which is a, mm -hmm. a TV show I'm into, I want to watch it. When everybody else is watching it, you know, and not wait for a, a year, year. To, right. for it to come out on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So to to feed all that, I mean, you add all that up, and you're up in the fifty to sixty buck neighborhood, and and that's cable. It's that's a basic cable, cable package. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. That's where we're at on that. Juan, how many services do you subscribe? I to? don't pay for Sling either, you know, and I have, you have the reviewers account. account as well, and I think it's the best service i mean for my money See. they dropped they have a big thing with univision right now and they don't yeah. have any of the univision and stuff. they lost hbo yeah. too they lost hbo at&t right. put the univision screws to them owned yeah. by at&t right or am i wrong hbo that? Is, that is owned by at&t yes hbo is owned by at&t univision's owned by nbc nbc no that's telemundo no? Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Innovation <laughs> is owned by Univision. They're, 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 they're their own <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, so you don't get that on there. I miss my Mexican soccer league. There were games. a bunch of Univision uh, sports channels available on there, right? Like several and different. Sling? No. On Sling? No. There not were. Anymore. There were, okay, yeah. yeah. There that's were. what I'm saying. Yeah. Before, before this happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's, yeah, the yeah. Pro that, uh, that's just indicative of the same problem. When you have 
uh, Comcast and AT&T owning all of these different uh, production houses. They own the content from its creation to its distribution. Mm -hmm. Like, they get to decide where it goes. And if they don't like what Netflix is doing to their business model, that's how they fight back. Does Sling offer a lot of those different sports properties like Fox? Yeah, pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 okay. Think of Sling as the online version of Dish Network in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. It, okay. Because it is owned by Dish Network. It's a part of that Hughes conglomerate. So um, I love Sling. And you know, PS View is great. DirecTV now is just, again, DirecTV. It's but expensive. Version. That's DirecTV is a little bit expensive. Yeah, I have PS View right now. Same. That's the one that I'm on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I like it. Mm -hmm. you know, it I don't use well. it a lot, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> price wise, I may need to price it out and see like how much is the standard sling yeah. subscription. Yeah. Well, the idea that cutting the cord is going to save you money has it's been not. over for <laughs> over yeah. a year now. Yeah, um, we're all duped. No. <laughs> They're going to get their money one way or the other. That's kind of what it comes down to. But I think I think some kind of but I mean. Ideally, we all just want to bundle the certain shows that we watch. Going respect. back to the original question, I don't think I want that package. You don't want the bundle the, to come back? The, no. Okay. Gonna get Which is funny because like Comcast and others are actually starting to put the Netflix and Amazon apps in the cable box. Like they're giving oh, you yeah. just one more reason not to let go of that cable box, you know, <laughs> which is ridiculous because it's a crappy version of the app and it's a crappy box to have to work with. Well, like, you can even, they just announced to Amazon Prime now, you can stream through the X1 experience. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I don't pay for Netflix either, but that's not because I have an account. That's, I use my mom's account. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't pay for that's the true yeah. bundle. Is your family? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a I think that is. That's. The, I think we figured it out. The, the family. Just bow your family friends plan. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> friends and family. There's like family. Three people that have my HBO account, but I got Hulu and I got Netflix. So actually, yeah. but I could because I have T-Mobile and T-Mobile offers free Netflix. Oh, I just. Yes, uh. my mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, it, that's a discussion that I think will be going on forever. Talking about streaming television and what we're going to do about that and how many you're going to subscribe to. I'm going to get Disney. Ooh, like, what about a streaming out. subscription as a gift for somebody this holiday season? What would you buy them? I mean, if you had to pick, what would you get them? Would you go straight for the flicks? Netflix. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but most people already have Netflix. But who, yeah, who doesn't have Netflix? That's yeah. a good point. I find a lot of people that don't have Hulu, and I love Hulu. I so. never... Yeah. I never I never seen Hulu. All I watch is Handmaid's Tale and Castle Rock, I think, on Hulu. You can get live that's TV it. from Hulu, too. Yeah, oh, they, they update so week to week, which is really nice. It's complicated. All right, moving All right. on. Hey, let's go on to our next topic here. We, got it. we still have to get to the robot waiters. I just want to make sure we get yes. to there. So uh, before we get to that, though, let's talk about the Apple Watch. And this was a big trending story today about the Apple Watch mm. 4 update. It's something we knew was going to be coming, but finally. We do oh, have look. it. Yeah, what a shock. We didn't know the update on time because it's our yeah, the update takes a little while. Wi-Fi is uh, kind of slow. <laughs> but if you haven't, <laughs> you Sorry, pick those Jean. fights on your own. Yeah, um, Sorry, I'm not Jean. fighting with Gene. <laughs> I got to be here every day. So, uh, so the Apple Watch Four, um, you know, this is the brand new one that came out. Juan has it, and the new update is the ECG monitor. So it's going to be able to monitor your heart rate. And this is one of the things uh, ECG. I said that right. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. ECG. I know, in my mind, I'm like, is it EKG? Electrocardiogram. Yes. Thank you. I just uh, said that, but thanks. So I'll just cut myself out. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> we don't need you, Greg. No way. <laughs> you guys will figure it. You'll fill, fill it in. Um, yes, yeah, so the update's there. So you can monitor your heart rate. I think this is a great use of this kind of technology just from a health standpoint. Not even just the exercising. I mean, people with health conditions. Or yeah, this conditions is the most or... important part of the Apple Watch 4, in my opinion. Yeah. So the fact that it's finally here is a big deal. I've never considered per seriously purchasing one. Uh, for myself, let alone others until that. And now that it does this, I feel like this is the new um, I've fallen on a can't get up button for, <laughs> for life you know, older older folks. No, I'm serious. My, you know, I I feel a lot safer, you know. I mom. think you're making fun of me. But no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm I mean. actually, I'm, I'm referring to my mom. You know, she's retired now. Mm -hmm. She you, lives out at the coast. A, she's a, by herself. An Apple Watch for your mom? Oh, I'm going to, she watches this show, Juan. So, no, I absolutely did not buy my mom an <laughs> Apple Watch 4 for Christmas at all. Hi, Mom. Ignore it. Earmuffs. Hi, Caleb's mom. Great. You know what? My, my fault for bringing it up. But, no, I think I think it's uh, it's great, you know, uh, it's health a monitor. And, it's a phone. It's and think about, you know, being able to, with IoT growing so much, think about being able to walk into a doctor's office, mm -hmm. and instead of yeah. them hooking you up to this, that, or the other for your blood pressure, your temperature, your blood sugar, and your ECG, mm -hmm. it can just report that data to the doctor. All the machines the doctor does doesn't have to have anymore, th which are expensive mm -hmm. and raise the rates and spike insurance that, costs. How accurate it will be, you know. Well, and that's part of the... Something that we mm -hmm. have to... We need a, a real E... 
CG. CG. Yeah. You see, yeah. And yeah. Comparing it. Is, and then I mean, I would imagine it's. We should go out there and do out that. The tech. Yeah, we should absolutely. we should go out there and yeah. I mean it costs a lot of money for those ECGs, mm -hmm. you know. So it's we'll have to figure that out. But yeah, we should go out there yeah, and compare the two. With a heart problem, so yeah, the, the insurance will pay for it. If you don't. Oh yeah, yeah. And then have it compared and, it, yeah. and see what the difference is. Yeah, we could put up some flyers, free studies. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, know Let's just send Drew. Works on that. Drew yeah. will do anything. Do it, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, make him go run ten miles it was first. Test paint. Right. Sure. Um, but what do you? How do you like the Apple Watch Four in general? And I, I've seen some uh, I questions. I love it. It's a bigger screen, you know, and and uh, now it has like shortcuts on the on the screen that you have. I have my shortcuts. watch in uh, here. So what do you use it for the most, though? Uh, just showing off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's more of oh, oops, yeah. oh my Apple. Do you read your messages off of it I much? Oh yeah, I mean, email. Sometimes I answer email. Mm -hmm. uh, text messages. You can answer text. He's in Slack. You yeah. Can uh, Slack. Question, can you do you make phone calls off of it? You yes. Do phone calls? This one, uh, the, one of the best investments you can do buying an iPhone watch, buy the one with the SIM card. Mm -hmm. That is uh, different. You can leave this at home. Yeah. You That's awesome. Like you go in a dinner, you go dinner date with my wife, I leave this at home. Leave your phone but at I'm home. Still connected. Well, then you still have your watch, so you just No, yeah, but over. you know, it's not, you know, it's kind of disrespectful to be doing this. Yeah. You right. Know, in the middle yeah. of uh, meeting on a Because this is totally not disrespectful. Oh, what time is it? Oh, it drives me way more nuts when people are at the dinner oh, table. Oh, I'm sorry like about those TPS <laughs> reports. Hold on just a second. I'll just does it make you more anxious to get the notifications like buzzing on your wrist? Like, does your anxiety just no, spike? No, no. So, but sometimes <laughs> no. it's something important and you don't have your phone with you mm -hmm. and you have to answer like it's an important email, like an email from Jeremy. Ah, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, that that's when the anxiety kicks in that, mm -hmm. oh, I need to go uh. get my phone. Like, sometimes I could be like, you know, my phone can be upstairs and mm -hmm. I could be downstairs, you know, and I got you know, I have to run mm -hmm. and go get the phone or the computer or whatever mm -hmm. and answer that you important right email. There. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other features that you like about it other than, you know, showing it off and then not uh, I, I like the big screen because yeah. I'm old. I need glasses. So anything that's a big screen is greatly appreciated. Big screens are just lovely in general. Perfect for moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if somebody were to if get If somebody one. were to get them for their I mean, Not anybody here. Yeah. No. So mm -hmm. just forget about that. Uh, all right. Well, the Apple Watch with the ECG capability. So that's the update. If you do have one, get the update. Apparently maybe it takes a little the, while. We get the update tonight and maybe we can yeah. do some video tomorrow. Go, record some video. Go to okay. the, e, go yeah, to the ER. <laughs> you want to do that? <laughs> get some stuff sorted out. Avoid that if possible, but drink a bunch of caffeine, see what happens. <laughs> Red, <laughs> Bulls. <laughs> Red Bulls. Red yeah. Bulls. All right. <laughs> Juan's going to drink Red Bulls all night here at DT, yeah. and tomorrow morning we'll test out the uh, ECG. So we'll see what happens. Uh, all right. So we've got uh, that, the Apple Watch update. A couple more things to get to here with Trends with Benefits. Just kind of walking through the trending tech news. This is one that I think is really fascinating because it's finally here. It's Waymo beating out Uber and everybody else who's been trying to get autonomous car service out there, actual commercial autonomous car service. Waymo with their new service, Waymo One in Phoenix right now. And it's only a select amount of people that can use it, but you can, in theory, call up an autonomous car, I, you pay for it. I have a little secret from a Google. You know what they do in Phoenix? That's where they do all the testing. All the mm -hmm. Well, yeah, no, I know they're doing the testing down there. Yeah, you know, why Phoenix? You know, no, yeah, why is why? 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 why on yeah. earth Phoenix? The weather. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. never, it's never snow. They don't have to deal with it. If, if it snows, yeah, it's gonna spill. Yeah, you, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, done with vehicle. Rarely you know, rain. Rarely rain. rain. Uh, well, okay. But when it does rain, doesn't it like monsoon hardcore? Yeah, but they just stop the testing. Yeah, you know, that's just like that's cut it. it off for a yeah. half hour and then. Yeah, but that's exactly. very rare. It's not long. I mean, when it yeah. when it happens, that's why they choose Phoenix. That's interesting. Well, it's it's out right now. So it, again, it's called Waymo One. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, that's always what I get down to. And I, I'll say for myself, I used to be apprehensive about autonomous cars because I don't like turning over control. But the they more do. and more I read about they it, move very the more I think slow, about it. Usually. Very I think these slow, ones. And they get to stop. And then, I mean, yeah, well, these are going reading, in regular, regular traffic. Paper, though, oh, right? really? Yeah, they're in regular traffic, but they just move, move really, really, really slow. I think it would frustrate the crap out of me. Yeah, right now, in its current stage, control. like I'm having trouble with slow moving people on the road as it stands. And yeah. sometimes I just need to get around them or whatever, but my patience would be 
would be tested. I don't think I could handle it. I think I would freak out and yeah, just Yeah, I feel bail. like your, your patients would be tested based on the cars around the autonomous vehicle. I think I would actually enjoy being in the autonomous vehicle, but then I'd be like, well, my, my speed is completely you know derived from the fact that everybody around me is going really slow if you're in Portland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That would drive me nuts. That is, yeah, that does, I'm on my Maybe in New lot. York, you know, that there's a lot of traffic and usually you're mm-hmm. slow. That would work out really well. It would be all you, right. You remove the stress of driving. Yeah. Not that anybody drives in New York, but. Well, but what about this, just the idea of comparing it to like an Uber service right now? And Uber is still testing theirs out. They had a big setback, um, but they are testing again. We did in Lyft in CS last year. You, you did Lyft. Uh, autonomous vehicle yeah. with well, Lyft. Well, there's somebody, it's somebody in right. the car that can take mm-hmm. control at any minute. And there is that. But I think they're eventually, you know, that's going to get worked out. That's mm-hmm. just for, for emergency services, at least uh, at least for Waymo right now. They're not going to be touching that. If it's late at night and I'm drunk, I'm, yeah. okay, I'm okay with going slow, probably. I like it just... If I have a meeting that I have to get to, and, oh, my God, here comes a slow car. Yeah, mm. then it's not going to work for you. Man. There's, like, a couple of small things like that that, like, if you forget your phone in the car, like, there's nobody, like, the driver's not going to be there to mm. notice and report it and tell you or oh, to, to put it away. Well, so what if you decide you're going to take a nap and you get to your destination, who's going to wake you up? Like, that would happen to me for sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure the car would be like, you have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> get the hell out. It might have to be <laughs> really, really loud to do yeah. that. It might need to, to, like, buzz the seat or something like mm-hmm. that. Also, do you get to choose the music you listen to when you're in the you car? You always do, even with Uber and Lyft. You can always. I don't uh, know. Those guys have never offered me like the no. option. Yeah, but you can do it on your app. You can do it on your I've app and, be, like, and put your music. You can. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't. I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. I'm yeah. lifting uh, wrong. Okay. Yeah. Life hack. <laughs> I what have do you do when you order? I'm it? pretty sure that there's like something I, I haven't ever actually ever used it because most of the trips I take okay. are pretty short. But there's something in there that's like putting death metal. I'm like, I want. I don't know. I swear. It, it exists. Okay. I'm looking this up. I'm, I'm sending it up. tonight somewhere. I want so. Cannibal Corpse playing when I get in the I, car. I think, I think the coolest thing you could do for a Spotify playlist right now is music to to aggravate your Lyft driver or yeah. whatever. Actually, that's bad. You probably get a bad rating. I probably would. Like no, that. yeah. But it would be. It sure would be fun. Jingle have you ever checked your rating? <laughs> I have not. I've checked my Uber rating. I have not asked. I think with Lyft, you have to ask the driver to tell you what your rating is. Okay. And that's kind of a weird conversation. Um, my Uber rating's pretty mm-hmm. good. It was like 4.9, which makes me wonder who was the person that's, who didn't like me. That's what mine is. So my Lyft rating, do? My Lyft rating is 4.8. <laughs> and I'm like, why is it 4.8? I use it a lot. But I've also gotten Lyfts for other, f- other people, uh, for friends of like, you know. Yeah. How you much can get my friends. They screwed people. it up for you. Yeah, they probably <laughs> screwed it up. Dang it. My 4.8 rating. Um, anyway, uh, that's, so that's going on. Waymo one. I know we're starting to run out of time. So I want to get to this. The robot waiters. And actually, I think this is really cool. More than just robot waiting. Do we um, have some B-roll? Do we get to we see? We do have some B-roll of this. We do uh, have a, we'll, really we'll get see to that. see um, what this looks like. So this is taking place in Japan right now. It's a Japanese cafe Adorable. where these robots... Uh, Whoa, look at Whoa. those eyes. Uh, yeah, the eyes are, yeah, the eyes are especially... Uh, again, they're moving slow. slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I may be pronouncing them wrong. It's Oriheim D are the robots. So they're built by this company called Ori, which is a Japanese startup focused on developing robotics for people with disabilities. So here's the key thing about this. These are being controlled by people who have some form of paralysis that aren't even there. They aren't even at that restaurant. They're getting the notifications of, okay, so-and-so wants this at this table, and then they are controlling the robots delivering this. Hmm. And so they, they, they show it, like, maybe not on this video, but on, on one of them. Um, you know, there's people with ALS or with spinal cord injuries. Oh my God! Bring me the clam <laughs> chowder already! <laughs> Holy and crap! That's what I was gonna get to. This she is gonna, it's gonna be cold, cold by the time I get it. God. <laughs> Nobody it's likes cold thing. clam Keely chowder. In the chat just said, "Damn, that waiter's slow." So when is McMinimins bringing them in? Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> That's a local joke. That's a local, yeah. But uh, but apt, Accurate. definitely. Uh, yeah. My high pasta is freezing cold now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Talk about communication breakdown. I'm seeing another question here. Jeff just said, "Is there any Q and A on this channel? If you got a question about anything, uh, drop it in right now." Um, here before we start wrapping up in a minute. But this is what's going on. Okay. Yes, it's slow. I mean, they, they are definitely slow, but the idea is pretty cool mm-hmm. that people, one of the, one of the people controlling them is completely quadriplegic and is just controlling those things with his eyes. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty cool. That's an interesting use of that. I'm, I'm not sure which I'm happier about the, the robot waiter or the fact that it's giving 
uh, somebody with disabilities an opportunity to do something new and cool. Yeah. You know, um, are if, they if ju not just too slow? Yeah. I, but <laughs> I mean, I with due respect to the people who are, you know, d getting something out of this, I still I want my food at, in a timely manner. And that's not happening and, and with I'm this particular robot. I'm very skeptical. I have to see a people with disability. Actually, you that and there, there is eyes. a video and I did not snag that. But okay. there is a, okay. So if you go to digitaltrends.com, there's an article. Um, on this, on this okay. entire project. And they do, well, they show people, I guess technically you could probably fake it if you wanted to, but nonetheless, <laughs> I don't think that's what's going on. I'm not sure it needs to go that way, though. I mean, I'm sure those robots could be completely automated. It's almost like yeah. somebody Especially in Japan. Something. They want to have like a great cause behind it. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's all that it is, unfortunately, is just somebody trying your to... Your clam shower will be cold. <laughs> my clam yeah. shower will be cold, I'm and you're not really helping bit. people. Yeah. Wow. It's heartless. Oof. Well, heartless things that I are cold. But I real. I mean, it's real, but damn. One of the things that I said when I work in technology, I'm very hard to impress. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what are you going to do to impress me? You know, I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right. So they we're take note of that, everybody at CES. We're a tough crowd, and that's okay. Yeah, we're true. supposed to be no, tough it is on true. stuff, right? Yeah. I wish they were cuter. <laughs> <laughs> Those eyes, The though. evil eyes are yeah, part of it. All right, well, <laughs> there it is. Japanese robots delivering you a soup that's going to be cold, but I'll still do it. I'll go. Um, thanks, everybody, for doing your threats with benefits. All right, Juan versus Caleb again, who will sell the most cars. That was the uh, discussion that we had, and we didn't get an answer, unfortunately, in the chat. But you can email us. Podcast at digitaltrends.com and let us know who you would pick. One might sell more cars, but you know, you're gonna walk away feeling dirty inside. Ah. <laughs> with me, with me, you're gonna feel like you made the best decision in the world. Yeah. That's my wow. that's You're my just pot shot to at sell one. a TV that it was sixteen hundred dollars. Where you can get the TLC or TCL, TCL for six hundred. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a whole different conversation. One. Trends with benefits live every Thursday, two thirty p.m. Pacific, five thirty Eastern, broadcasting on the digital trends platforms wherever we're at, but also as a podcast. So hit subscribe for podcasts. Make sure that you get that wherever you get your podcast. We want to make sure that you are tuning in and uh, getting this downloaded as soon as we put it up. So I think that's about it for today. Tune into Digital Trends Live tomorrow morning, Friday morning, 9 a.m. We're live every weekday, I'm 9 a.m. Pacific. I may be here tomorrow. Are you going to hop in tomorrow? I may. Well, you have to. you'll have to <laughs> fight C, <laughs> Editor-in-Chief Jeremy Kaplan. But I... But there, that's just one fight. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy who? I yeah. know who I pick in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy who? I think we can make this happen. Actually, I think that's a great idea. So uh, tune in tomorrow, and we will be right back here next week with another Trends with Benefits.